Hey, I'm Ben from Modern Gram, and today we are going to do a Modern Gram valuation of Activision Blizzard Inc. So be sure to stick around to hear what I think of this company. So, of course, the company name is Activision Blizzard Inc. Ticker is ATVI. Current price is about $79.39. Sector is Communication Services, and the industry is Interactive Media. Now over here we've got the items from the balance sheet that I find most important. We have total current assets, total current liabilities, long-term debt, total assets, intangible assets, total liabilities, and outstanding shares. All of these figures will come into play in this valuation. Over here we have a chart showing the earnings per share diluted in blue can see they've been rising and the dividends per share in red those have been rising as well but let's look at the details over the last 30 years you can see that the earnings have gone up that's this figure here and then we have the earnings per share mg which is the earnings per share modern gram i have that as a like a weighted average of normalized earnings and with that you can see that the trend has continued to go up with the exception of about 2017. There was a big drop there that brought down that weighted average as well. And a little bit in the last couple of years, they've kind of like stalled a little bit in their growth. Dividends, we have had a dividend since 2010, we did not have one before that. And dividend growth has been pretty steady. Except for this latest year, there has not been growth yet. I wouldn't give up on that time yet because there, actually this is December of 22. So yeah, there was no growth in 22 in that dividend. The yield itself has been rather low actually compared to other companies. But and it started above 1% and it has since kind of, uh, stayed around half a percent to 0.75 percent so that is one thing to keep in mind as well the dividend payout ratio has been about the same about 20 25 percent most years stage one of the analysis is to determine if the company is suitable for the defensive investor or the enterprising investor and remember the defensive investor is somebody who is not willing to do a lot of research into individual companies and so they have very strict requirements that a company must meet before the defensive investor will consider them and here let's go through those we have an adequate size of the company has to be over two billion in market cap it passes that the current ratio has to be over two here it is 4.07 so we pass that the earnings have to be positive for at least 10 years you can see we've got 10 years of positive earnings so we pass that pays a dividend for 10 years passes that requirement and an increase in earnings by at least a third in the last 10 years it passes that as well however the PEMG the price to earnings ratio using that weighted average of earnings has to be under 20 and here it is 28.88 so it fails that and the price to book ratio has to be below two and a half it is 3.24 here now there's another way this one could pass that and that is price to book times the price to earnings has to be under 50 but here it's 93.42 so we fail on on that one as well and that comes to a five points on the scale for defensive investors and that is not enough so it is not suitable for defensive investors but what about enterprising investors and enterprising investors are people who are willing to go farther in their research into a company and so they are a little bit less stringent with those initial requirements and here we have current ratio has to be over 1.5 again it passes that it's 4.07 debt to net current assets has to be under 1.1 here it is 0.33 so we pass that earnings have to be positive for five years we pass that it has to pay a dividend it passes that and it has to have earnings greater than they were five years ago so we pass that as well and if you've been keeping score that comes to five and we pass for the enterprising investor 
Now, if you're enjoying this video and my other videos, be sure to take a moment to like this one and subscribe to the channel and then download the free valuation calculator found via the link down below. Stage two is a determination of intrinsic value. And to calculate that, and we remember that the value is separate from the price. The value is what a company is worth. The price is just what the market is willing to pay at any given time. But the value we calculate by taking Benjamin Graham's formula from the intelligent investor, and that is value equals earnings per share times 8.5 plus two times the growth rate. Now I'm using my weighted average earnings per share, and so I've called it the modern Graham value formula. So we have two variables to calculate. We have earnings per share and growth. So earnings per share, I calculate by taking the five years of earnings, putting the most weight on the current year and the least weight on five years ago. And I get 2.75. For growth, I take that figure and I take the figure from five years ago, which is 1.61. I calculate the total growth between those two at 70.55%. I take an average growth of that of 14.11%, and then I put a safety margin in there because growth is such a key variable in this formula. If you overestimate growth, that will like really screw with your value. And so we want to make sure we have a safety margin here. We don't want to overestimate that, and we come to a growth estimate of 10.58. So plugging that into the formula, we take the earnings and the growth, and we get a calculation of 81.5 SIBs. Now you can see from this very handy chart over here that that is pretty close to what the current price is. A couple other things to look at. The net current asset value is a floor to your price. And here we have 799. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. It doesn't play too much of a role here, but it is a good thing to keep in mind. The value based on 3% growth is 39.87, and the value based on zero growth would be 23.37. So those are other ways of looking at this based on how much growth you think the company might get. And the market implied growth rate here is 10.19%. You get that by uh, putting price here and solving for growth. And so we get 10.19%. Another way of looking at this would be if you think the company will grow more than that in perpetuity, then it would be undervalued. If you think it will grow less than that, then it's overvalued. Now over here we can see some of the details. The modern gram the price is uh, 79.39, which is 97% of the intrinsic value. So it gets a fairly valued rating here. Coming down here, to the modern gram grade system, this takes into account more factors that might be useful for uh, comparing companies across industries. So here we have investor suitability. It gives one and a half points for being suitable for the enterprising investor. It gives half a point for being a good price to value. It gives zero points for trading below the gram number. Zero points for uh, dividend growth, zero points for a dividend yield, half a point for trading below its industry average PEMG, and zero points for trading below its NCAV net current asset value. So that comes to two and a half points, which on the chart is a C plus. Stage three is further research. If you've gotten to this point and you've decided that you want to move forward with this company, now it's time to look deeper at it for your own purposes to determine if it would fit your own personal portfolio. I can't do that. You're the only one who can do that. You need to look at your own goals, your diversification, stuff like that. Now, these are some things that might help. Again, the net current asset value formula should be a floor. It's a liquidation value. So it would be if the company took all of its current assets and paid off every single liability that it has, that's how much cash would be left to immediately distribute to shareholders. The Graham number formula is another way of looking at those defensive investor requirements. It is a, uh, people have derived this based on yeah the defensive investor requirements. 
to give a number to the company that can be compared to the price. And here it is forty-one fifty-seven, which is much higher than the um, the price. And again, the price is seventy-nine point three nine. The earnings are two point seven five. So we get a price to earnings ratio of twenty eight point eight eight, and then other figures: current ratio four point oh seven, price to book three point two four, dividend yield currently 0.59 percent, and it only has one year of consecutive years of dividend growth. Now, stage four in the analysis, if you've gotten this far, is to determine whether it's a good buying opportunity. And that's where technical analysis can come into play. You never want to base your value on technical analysis. You want to make sure that you're doing fundamental analysis for that. But it can be useful to look at what the market is doing in order to determine a good entry point. And so we're looking at the daily chart right now, and you can see it has been rising and then it kind of stalled. It hit a point right about here where it had resistance and it just broke through that. So it is rather interesting that it just jumped up there. However, coming down here to the relative strength index, you can see that momentum is a little bit close to the overbought range. And these lines on here, the purple one is the current RSI, the red is the short-term moving average, and the blue is the long-term moving average. You can see they're right around the middle there. And you can see that the moving averages on the price chart itself, we are pretty close. That long-term moving average is getting close to having a crossover to the very long term. So this might be an interesting time. Let's take a look at the weekly chart to see where the next resistance point would be. It's pretty close. I mean, it might come up to about here, about 80 points to get to that, or like $80, which is not that much higher. But if it can, on that daily chart, and even here on the weekly, you can see the, the short-term moving average is close to moving over that medium one, then there might be price movement going farther up. So this would be one to consider if you're at this point, perhaps. Uh, again, you would have to make that determination yourself. But hopefully that is useful for you. And uh, of course, click on the video on the screen now. It will be another uh, analysis that you will like. And thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Take care.